Hello crafty friends! My name's Alicia, but you can call me Crafty Owl. And in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how I made my first set of cards using the September 2023 sheet load of cards printable. I hope you'll stick around, find out what makes this month extra special, see how I made my cards, and get some tips along the way. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring the bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. Yesterday I debuted the brand new sheet load of cards September 2023, and I also told you a couple things that make it special. Not only is it the 50th, yes, 5050th sheet load I have shared here for free on YouTube, it is also a special size that I've never done before. This month we will be making 5 by 7 cards. Now even if these aren't your favorite, I still hope that you'll give this month's sheet load a try. I know that 5x7 isn't my thing, but it was popular in the what other card sizes would you like to make poll, so I decided I'm going to give it a try too. If you haven't yet seen the debut video to find out how to download your printable, make sure to check it out. It's linked in the description box below and will be added as an end card to this video. Now today I'm here to show you how I made the cards and as always on the second of the month, my team of collaborators will be sharing theirs too. I have collaborators here on YouTube and over on Instagram. To see the Instagram team, you'll just click on the link in the description box and to see the YouTube team, there's a few things you can do. First of all, you can try clicking on that hashtag in the title but we all know that doesn't work all the time so as soon as every video goes live i will get it added to a playlist so i have that linked in the description box but if i haven't gotten to that yet everybody's channel is also linked down there as well i know that each of them would love for you to stop by see what they created and leave them some love this month's sheet load is going to show you how to make 12 five by seven cards with two pieces of pattern paper and 18 pieces of cardstock now yesterday we talked a little bit about how daunting 18 pieces of cardstock might seem, but 12 of those are for the card bases, and I'm sure many of us have lots of cardstock in our stash. Now if you're not into making a sheet load of 5x7 cards, I do hope you'll at least give the single card dimensions a try to see what you think. And if you like this sketch, I will be converting it to an A2 card size in the future. In front of me are the main supplies you'll see me use today. I did go over them in more detail in yesterday's video. But as I get into the process, when I add other products and tools and use these, I will let you know. As always, if I ever leave you with any questions, feel free to leave those in that comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty! I'm going to get started today by cutting my two pattern papers per the instructions on the cutting guide. Now if your pattern paper does have a direction, make sure to keep that in mind before making the first cut. We are going to rotate it so we cut two rows from the top that are 6 inches each. So since your pattern paper may be exactly 12 inches, you might not want to do a generous cut on these. Those two strips then get rotated and cut down into pieces A, B, and C. Now A and C are the same width, so you can cut the A's, the B's, then the C's, or you can cut the A's and C's all together and end up with your B's. For this first one, I am going to cut them in order, so I cut three pieces using the one inch mark to the left of my cut line for piece A. Then, using the one and three quarters inch mark to the left of my cut line, I cut three pieces for B. 
And finally, I went back to that one inch cut line and cut myself three C's. Now you'll notice when I get down to the end of the paper, my fingers get in the way of the cutting guide. So I'm gonna bring in my Scotch removable tape and tear off a piece and hold this in place while I make the cuts. You will see me use that same piece of tape throughout this entire video. I like that it holds the paper in place when needed, but it doesn't tear it when I pull it up. There is a small strip left over at the end of each row, and I will be showing you later how I use this and make it a no scraps sheet load of cards. For the bottom strip, I will be cutting the same size pieces, but this time I started by cutting six pieces that were one inches wide, three for A and three for C, and then I cut the C's 1.3 quarters of an inches wide at the end. I then brought in that second piece of pattern paper and cut it exactly like the first. Next, I brought in my 12 pieces for CS1, which will be the card bases and the matting for that skinny strip across the center. Now, because that is only one inch tall and my fingers will get in the way of that cut bar once again, the first thing I'm going to do is cut the one inch strip off the bottom. So this is 11 inches by one inches and I'm going to set that to the side. Then I'm going to leave the cardstock in the same orientation and cut that piece to 7 inches tall. I continue to do this for all 12 sheets and you will notice that skinny strip between the 1 inch and the 7 inches. I just set that to the side and I might use it later for sentiments or border strips. I definitely won't be sending those to the recycling bin. Once those first cuts were made, it was time to cut these down to the final size. Now for the one inch strips, the printable shows you to just cut one from each piece, but since it will fit two across and I'll end up with larger scraps in the end, I am gonna cut two strips from each one. So I cut two five inch wide pieces and I just cut half of these and then I'll save those one inch strips for something later. Now we're going to finish cutting our card bases. To end up being 5x7 when folded, I need these to be 10 inches wide, so that's where I made each of the cuts. You could fold these by hand now, but later I'll show you what I do when making card bases. While I finish cutting those, I have an extra special shout out. During the month of August, I had some channel members reach one year of membership. Their names will be scrolling up on screen now, and I just want to take a minute to recognize them and say thank you for your continued support. Monthly support from my channel members helps keep me creating here on YouTube and sheetload of cards free for all. If you're ever interested in finding out more about the perks of channel membership, I have a link in the description box below. Next, I'm going to cut CS2, which is the matting cardstock, and you'll need four pieces, and these get cut into three pieces that are four and a quarter by six and a quarter. To get three pieces of this size out of one sheet of cardstock, they will be cut in different orientations. So to get started, I cut six and a quarter inches off the top, and because my trimmer is missing the six and a quarter and six and a half inch marks, I actually cut the remaining four and three quarters off the bottom. Then I'm going to take what's left over at the bottom and cut that to four and a quarter inches tall. I make these same cuts on the remaining three pieces and then I'm going to pull in those and cut down to the final size. So the large one at the top that is six and a quarter inches tall, it gets cut in half at four and a quarter inches wide. Then the bottom piece, which is already four and a quarter inches tall, gets cut to six and a quarter inches wide. And you just want to make sure you end up with 12 mats for your final cards. 
Next, I brought in one piece of that same color cardstock for CS3, and this is going to be the mats for the skinny craft strip that we cut off from CS1. The first thing I'm going to do is cut this into two pieces that are five inches wide by eight and a half inches tall. Then those pieces get rotated and cut to one and a quarter inches. Once again, for this cut, I'll be using the measurement to the left of my cut line so I can easily push my cardstock from right to left and just keep cutting until I have those 12 strips for CS3. For the final cuts on each of these, I did bring back in that same piece of removable tape to hold this in place while I made the cuts. And finally for cutting, I brought in one piece of white cardstock for CS4. I will be using some circle dies, but since the cardstock is too wide to go through my machine, I cut this in strips that were about three and a half inches wide. To die cut my circles, I chose Tailored Expressions Stitch Circle Stacklets dies. They had one that was exactly three inches in there, but if you don't own dies or one that's not the right size, try to find something around your house that might work. For instance, this roll of tape, maybe if you trace the inside, you could use that. And even though the sketch calls for that semicircle, you could definitely use a different shape or even use a piece of ephemera there. Using that circle die, I cut six full circles, and now we're going to cut those down to get our final 12 sentiment pieces. Since my circles are exactly three inches, these are easy cuts at one and a half. I do center it between the one and a half inch mark on the left and the one and a half inch mark on the right just to make sure it's nice and centered. Now if your circle isn't exactly three inches, you'll want to measure it and figure out what halfway would be. And if you have a trimmer like mine, you can kind of play with centering it between the measurements that are the same on the each side of the cut. Now to finish off my card bases, I brought in my 10 inch by 7 inch pieces of craft card stock and using my mini score buddy, I put a score line at 5 inches and then I used the bone folder to reinforce the fold. Now because the score buddy isn't quite 7 inches tall, there's going to be a little bit at the bottom that doesn't get a score, but it should fold just fine for you. After cutting all of those pieces, I wanted to add a little bit of texture and interest to that craft cardstock strip, so off camera I used an embossing folder to do that. Now that everything is cut, we can start the assembly, and the first thing I'm going to do is adhere the two skinny strips together. To help me align the edges of these pieces, I brought in my mini score buddy, and when I'm going to glue these together or adhere these together, I use that ledge to help line up that left side. If you don't have a score buddy, you could use a misty, a trimmer, just something that has a little ledge to it. And if you don't have any of that, this is definitely an optional helper. Now it's time to adhere the pattern papers to their mat. To do this, I'm going to switch the piece B's, so A and C are different than the center, and we're going to start by adhering the outside pieces first. So I add adhesive to piece A and put that to the left, trying to get a nice even border on the top, bottom, and left. Then I skip the center one for now and put some adhesive on the back of piece C. And I do the same thing, but with the right side. Now I can center piece B left to right between the two, and from top and bottom it should match up. This is going to keep you from starting on the left going A, B, C and not getting the spacing correctly and ending up with either too much or too little space to the right side of C. I hope that makes sense. It sounded like a lot of rambling. I adhered that second set of patterns in the same way, this time the leaves were in the center spot, and because of the way my pattern papers worked out, I will have six card fronts of each style. Now if you used a double sided pattern paper where the fronts and backs went together, you could end up with four pattern variations. While I finish putting those pieces on, I thought I would stop by with something I haven't done in a while, and that is the QOTV or question of the video. These are just fun little questions I like to pose from time to time so we can get to know each other a little bit better. 
Today I would like to know, what is your favorite card making holiday or season? So what do you like to make cards for or what theme of cards do you like to make? For me, fall and fall colors and thank you cards are definitely my favorite. So the leaves and colors on this pattern paper today are right up my alley. I can't wait to read your answer in that comment section below. Once all of the pattern papers were matted, it was time to put these pieces onto the card fronts. To do this, I used my ATG and just adhered these flat to the center. While I'm working on those, I do want to point out that even though my cards are portrait, you could cut your pattern papers landscape and make landscape finish cards. Sheet load is always a great jumping off point for you to make them your own. After I had all of those together, it was time to add the matted cardstock strips. For this, once again, I'm going to use my ATG to keep this card nice and flat, and I did bring in the sheet load printable to help with placement of the first one. Now you can definitely move the strip up or down to meet your needs. I did try to stick with the sketch. I had the printable next to me for the first couple, but then for the remaining ones, I did take it away and just try to guesstimate. Now, if you're going to give these away as a set all together, you might want to make them all even, but if you're just going to be sending these out to one person at a time, you definitely don't have to be perfect on this. Once the card bases were finished, it was time to add the decoration. The first thing I'm going to be doing is stamping the sentiment, and for this I'm using the Hello Fall Sentiment from Not Too Shabby's Pretty Pumpkin Stamp Set. I placed one of my semicircles in place, having the lower right hand corner down in the lower right hand corner of my Misty, just so each time I can make sure it's down there before I stamp. To ink these up, I am using Tailored Expression Cilantro ink. I thought it went well with some of the greens in the paper. And once I have it set up once and make sure everything looks okay, it was super easy to keep stamping to get 12 total sentiments. Before I put my Misty away, I did want to do a little more stamping. When I use a card base that's a little darker that might be hard to read the personal message inside, I like to put a piece of white or maybe sometimes off-white cardstock. And today I wanted to do that and I thought I would add a little extra decoration. For this, I got out the Autumn Vibe stamp set from Not Too Shabby and I'll be using the two leaves and the acorn because it goes with that pattern paper on the front. I placed these three down in the lower right hand corner and to go with the burgundy from the card front, I'm going to be using mold wine ink from Tailored Expressions. Once I had the trio of stamps in place, I inked it up and got those inside cards stamped. The stamp set I'm using is from a previous box of the month and is no longer available, but always make sure to dig in your stash and see what you have that will work for your cards. To add a little more decoration to the inside and use up all of those pattern paper scraps, I brought those pieces back in and cut them into sections that were 2 inches tall. Then just by hand I cut a little angle in the bottom of each because only one was going in each card they didn't have to be the same angle and then I used my ATG to add adhesive to the back and adhere those to that white card. I placed them just a little in from the left. If you plan on making this sheet load of cards, let me know in the comment section below if you'll be using up all of your scraps too. These panels got adhered to the inside of the cards and then it was time to finish off the fronts. To do this, we'll be adding the sentiments and the sketch calls to have them added butted up against the craft piece of cardstock, but if you wanted, you could always move it up and have it butt up against that mat. That is totally up to you. I personally like the way it breaks up that line on the top, so I will be butting it up against the craft piece. To adhere this, I'm using my Barely Art liquid glue so I can get right in those corners and it gives me a little wiggle room if I have to adjust it once it's placed down. I finish adding these to the fronts and then to finish off the cards, you know I want a little bit of sparkle. 
So I brought in my Elizabeth Craft Designs glitter dots in transparent gold and added five around the sentiment. I continued this until they all had a little bling and here are close up looks at the finished cards. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I put together my first set of cards using the September 2023 sheet load of cards and got some tips along the way. If you did, as always, a thumbs up is appreciated. Now don't forget to go visit all of the collaborators creations by clicking on those links in the description box. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you are interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box below.